All right, so today we're going to talk about plant taxonomy and how plants get their names. So plants will either have two types of names, and the first type is the common name, and the second type is the scientific name. Um, and the common names are probably names of plants that you hear of most often, such as like a lily or a marigold, whereas a scientific name is probably a name that you don't hear as often. So we'll talk about the importance of each of these names and how they're used in naming plants. So let's talk about our objectives for today. Um, we will understand why scientific names are used when naming plants. We'll understand the difference between common and scientific names. We'll understand the difference between the genus, the species, and the cultivar. And we will understand the binomial system and how it's used in naming plants. So some of you guys might be familiar with this. Some of you guys might not. So we will go through um, why this is important. <clears throat> so first, let's talk about a taxonomist. So a taxonomist is a scientist who identifies and classifies plants. So literally their job is just to identify plants and give them their names. And when we're talking about scientific names, scientific names are often written in Latin. So way back in time when um, early scholars were first developing a naming system for plants and animals, they typically wrote them in Latin or Greek. And uh, when they gave them their names, they tried to uh, give them names that described their characteristics, whether it be their physical features or their reproductive features. Um, and this caused a problem at first because their names were typically really long and really hard to remember. So, that changed throughout time so that it became more simple and easier to understand. So, the difference between scientific and common plant names and how the binomial system became a thing. So, most plants have more than one common name, and that can become very confusing. So, this flower that we have here is called an Alstroemeria. That's the scientific name. We will learn that later, but um, its common name, some of its common names are Peruvian lily or lily of the Incas, and uh, these using these common names can be very confusing because these could be used to describe other plants as well. So this guy named Carl Linnaeus, he was a Swedish botanist, and he's the one that be, uh, developed the binomial system for naming plants. And the binomial system for naming plants just gives plants two names to identify it. And we'll talk about that uh, later on in this PowerPoint. So a lot of you guys have probably seen this um, hierarchy chart for classifying plants and animals. But we will not focus on all the components of this chart. We will just focus on the bottom two, um, the genus and the species because these are the two that will give plants their names. So um, when Linnaeus uh, first started uh, classifying plants, he classified them based on their flower and reproductive structures. So the old way of classifying plants, as we mentioned, the names were really long and hard to remember, and let's look at a few of them. So first of all, catnip, the scientific name used to classify that plant was Nepeta floribus interpte spicatus pedunculitis. I can't even pronounce that, but that was a really long one and hard to remember. And carnation is no better. Um, its scientific name was Dianthus floribus solitaris squirmus, whatever. Yeah, not important. We don't use that anymore, thankfully. It's a lot more simple now. And we will talk about that next. So binomial nomenclature. Um, in Linnaeus's new system, each plant was given two names. Quite the change from the nine plus names used to identify other plants. And the two um, components used to classify uh, plants in a binomial nomenclature system is the genus and the species, as we talked about earlier. And plants will be named in that order, using the genus first and the species second. So when we think of this, think of your name. So the genus is kind of like your last name. It's the same as the rest of your family, but it makes you different than, let's say, the Swansons. 
Um, and the species is like your first name, and it just sets you apart from the rest of your family. So it's kind of like writing your last name first and your first name last. <laughs> so first, let's talk about genus. So a genus is a plant's group name. All plants with the same genus share characteristics and are more closely related than plants from other genuses. So again, this is like you being related to your family. And then next, the species. Um, the species is a plant-specific name. And this means plants within the same species share further characteristics and produce plants of the same type. Um, and these plant characteristics are consistent. So again, think of the species as your first name. It sets you apart from, say, your brother, your sister, or your mom, or your dad. And following those two, we don't um, typically use these often, but we'll talk about it, is the cultivar. And a cultivar is a cultivated variety. And sometimes plants will have this in their name um, because of a specific characteristic about the plant. Or sometimes it's uh, the person who discovered the flower is sometimes used in the name as well. So um, in the examples we have here, we have a Don Juan rose. And this ro specific type of rose was, dis was discovered by a guy named Don Juan. So um, his name was used to name the rose. And then the other one is the golden trumpet flower. And as you can see, the flower is a gold color and it's shaped like a trumpet. So um, cultivars are used to uh, name plants that have specific characteristics. So next we'll talk about how we write these names and we'll talk about some examples. So. When we write scientific names by hand, the genus is always capitalized, but the species is always lowercase. And then when we handwrite them, we have to underline them. So let's look at this example. So here we have a silver maple, and the scientific name for silver maple is Acer saccharum, saccharinum. Um, you guys will not have to memorize any scientific names, so don't worry about that. But scientific names will always be given to you. Um, and as you can see, the, f the genus and the scientific name is Acer. The species is Saccharinum. And when we write this, you can see that the A in Acer is capitalized, but the S in Saccharinum is not. So... We'll look at how we type it out now. So when we're typewriting a scientific name, it can be a lot easier. So it's same thing. We'll capitalize the genus and we'll lowercase the species. But instead of underlining it, we'll italicize it. So here we have, for our example, we have a sugar maple. And the scientific name for sugar maple is Acer saccharum. And as you can see, the A in Acer is capitalized, the S in Saccharum is lowercase because it's a species, and the word is italicized. So, again, when we handwrite it, we will write it out, capitalizing the genus, lowercasing the species, and underlining it. But when we typewrite it, we'll do the same thing, but we'll just italicize it instead of underlining it. So that's all I have for you guys today about taxonomy. Hope it wasn't too confusing. I have assigned you guys a worksheet. Um, you'll have to, it requires you to look up some information. It's not too hard, but that will be due later this week. And if you guys have any other questions, please let me or Mr. Warren know. And hope you guys have a good day.